Hi there, my name is Sonia Boko. Welcome to my channel where I help to put a positive twist in your life. With today's balloon twisting tutorial, I'm going to share with you how to make this super cute bunny rabbit and it is a candy cup and it is adorable. So if you want to learn how to do this one, keep watching and let's get into it. To make this very cute bunny rabbit, you are going to need one six inch heart and then two 160 modeling balloons in the same color as the heart and a third 160 balloon in the color of your choice for the bow accoutrements. I'll also be talking you through how to make the very cute face that you see on this bunny rabbit. Now this next part is optional but there's also a puff inflated heart which is super adorable nestled right there in the bunny's paws and if you are looking to attach the balloon or candy cup a six inch round in your choice of colour. Let's get hopping on this tutorial on how to make the balloon bunny. I find using a tool such as the Legenda is very useful for this although it's purely optional you can also use a hand pump. The design is going to start off with a six inch heart. We are going to inflate it first. For comparison here's my hand and this is about how much I've inflated it so the lobes aren't pronounced at all and there's not a lot of air down here in the nozzle end but I'm just going to tie that off and I don't want to tie that knot too firm at this point and I want to have a little bit of slack there as well because we're going to be manipulating other parts of the balloon and we need the air to go somewhere and not pop. Now that we have inflated our heart and two of the 160s we're going to start off by making the bows. So I've inflated this and I'm not going to be using all of it so just make sure you've got enough to create the bows. I'm going to do a fairly small petal twist to create the first part of the bow, a small half size bubble pinch twist followed by another petal twist there. You can go ahead and separate that little bow, I've just tied it off and I'm going to rest it while I do the second. a little bit of a tip as you go to do this one. If you fold the balloon over first of all to make it look approximately the right size, start to twist and you can manipulate the air more towards the tail end there to try and get those bows just the right size. What you can do if you want a little bit of extra security is so thread that through, knot and all, and these are going to be wrapping around our six inch heart. Keep wanting to call it a 160 for some strange reason. This next bit is probably the trickiest part of the design, but it's not too bad. What I'm going to do is hold this heart in the palm of my hand, just encouraging the air to move towards one of those upper lobes, and using my opposite hand just twist off that bubble. Now taking one of the bows, I'm just going to incorporate and I'm going to try to replicate this on the same size in roughly the same position. So again holding the balloon in the palm of this hand, squishing air towards that lobe. might take you a couple of goes to really get a hold of that in between your thumb and your pointer finger before twisting that off and as I was talking that bubble disappeared a bit. So you've got to move fairly quick but also twist that bubble nice and securely around maybe three or four times just to help ensure that the air doesn't want to escape back into the main part of the balloon. So let's do that one more time. Squish. So let's do that one more time. Squish. We want those bubbles to look fairly even and I think that they do. A bit of variance is fine though. And we can just position it like this for now. Uh, as a side note, this also is really cute for a 
teddy bear design you know what I'm saying that is one I've got in the works as well basically I had come up with the teddy bear design using this principle but I thought it could be adapted beautifully to be used for Easter as well so I hope you agree <laughs> So with the ears, I want to use the curvature or maintain the curvature. I want to maintain the curvature as much as possible as I can of the balloon without getting too pointed or too angular in these areas. So I'm going to determine how just how long I want my ears to be twisting off. I just encourage the knot to stay on the same side as the nozzle. So I can then thread it through <laughs> and that just helps lock it in there a bit complete the ear before any of the ears is incorporated to get them as evenly as possible in size you could now do your other ear I think it just so happens that there's just enough air in there to do exactly what I want, so that's perfect. And I'm just going to remove this excess here. You do want to save this because that's going to come in very handy in a little while. I might make that a bit shorter too. So now we have our two ears, <laughs> which can be incorporated into our bunny head. Minus. I'm just going to grasp the loose ends here, sweeping the ears of the balloons under the structure we've got here. And bringing it around to place on top. Now I think it's a very cute look if you would like to have the bow facing forward like this, but if you're finding that you're struggling with the ear sitting in position, what we will do is just switch that up. So either way it looks super cute. Let's go ahead to add the other ear. Sweeping it under, bringing those ears on top. <laughs> and then, of course, make sure you're positioning it. <laughs> so you've got the two white bubbles at the back and the front of your bow at the front. And see, I think if you can get it to sit in this way, it does look really cute. Um, it might highlight the size differences in the bows a bit more too. So really, it's up to you and what you think looks good. <laughs> And I think that looks pretty cute. So this next step is going to get the body in the bunny and we are going to use that heart to do just that. However, if you have other ways of making cute bunny rabbit bodies, it just would be perfect to add this onto there as well. So it works really cute by itself. Uh, let's go ahead to look at just how that body is done. So remember how we made sure there was a bit of slack here in the nozzle end? We are now going to squish the air towards our knot and we are going to twist off a bubble. Here mine is about three fingers wide but what we're creating is more of a sphere shape for the head of our bunny and I think that looks really cute. <laughs> now at this particular point remember how I also said don't tie that knot too hard we're going to roll it down just a bit to be more towards the nozzle neck of the balloon because we are going to put another twist in there. So with this three to four finger bubble I'm just splitting it. And now I want you to grasp it. Oh, be careful because you can get friction tears. What I'm just going to do is tie that off. So you can salvage it. So do be careful when you are rolling knots and all that jazz because it can create friction tears. We don't want to be too rough. It's more of a gentle kind of motion. And if your knot is not too tight to begin with, then you can get a lot more working out of it. A few moments later. You can make these two different sizes, make the front tummy bubble a bit bigger than the back tummy bubble. 
then we're just going to grab that nozzle end and wrap it into the nozzle. So this step has created the bunny's tum tum <laughs> and it's bum bum. <laughs> Tummy and back, okay. Anyway. So we are going to now start working in on the legs for this bunny. If doing this intimidates you or you've got too many stress tears and you are done, try just leaving the body as the one. And when you do the next step, you could just change it up a little. The next part of our design is going to be to create the legs. We're starting off with a pedal twist and I'm going to twist the bubble about two, three fingers wide, followed by a small bubble Pinch twisted. I'm going to move now into the haunches. Many years ago, earlier in my balloon journey, I came across this beautiful website full of great designs by Takeda Kai, and one of them was this amazing kitty cat. And this kitty cat, the haunches of it, I have basically adapted and used that time and time again for all different kinds of animals that I've done. So, as a balloon artist, it is hard to come up with new and wonderful ideas that you have never seen before. Do try. <laughs> I do, I do, um, but chances are it has been done before, if not by me, but by someone else or even yourself, and kudos to you. Uh, but a lot of what I come up with is things that I think are beautiful, and what he had done by creating this cat design and sharing those instructions with the world is really given us a great gift and allowed us to develop and become pretty amazing and talented in what we do. Side over, but thank you to get off. Now, moving into those haunches, I am going to make a bubble it's about three fingers wide. I'm going to create a structure which is a bubble and a pinch twist, which is going to then go into the loop created by that pedal twist. And that is the beauty of the design that he created. loop pinch twist followed by another loop twist and then we have a bubble and a pinch twist and now twisting a small bubble which is about two and a half fingers wide and taking my bunny rabbit head and body I am going to just wrap that around like so and now I'm going to repeat what I've done on this opposite side trying to match the sizes and shapes of those bubbles as much as possible. <laughs> and she's a bit everywhere at the moment, but we have our two back haunches on either side. Next what we're going to do is bring those two legs in together and I'm going to take what's left of this 160 and just bring it around and over to this opposite side. We are only going to need to get two more bubbles out of this and those twists are going to be off from the pause. So I'm twisting off a bubble which is approximately three fingers length. I'm going to bring it into the neck of the bunny rabbit. Just be gentle, take your time, bring it around to the other side. And I'm going to twist off a bubble that was about the same size as the other leg and I'm going to get rid of this excess now. Tying off. I'm bringing that around and wrapping that into the front paws area. I'm just going to take a few moments to adjust everything. That is, these are the two front arm paws we've just created. These are the loop pedal twists that we began with. And we have our haunches, one on either side, 
and here is our body back here so this is where I was saying you could get away with just keeping it as one bubble the reason I do like to split that body balloon is because we can actually add a tail in there oh, <laughs> that is <laughs> that's a bit more like it we're just going to go now in making sure that everything's sitting just where it needs to so those haunches down to the side those paws to the front those arms are there remembering how i said save those 160s i like to over inflate a bit and then just really squeeze that off just to give it a more rounded appearance might need to let some air out tying it off Make, making sure I've got the knot and that's going to pass under that twist in there. Just thread that through, be very gentle. Just wrapping that around once. And I'm going to just take the leftover part of that and wrap it up into the neck area just to really help to fill that in there. Looking pretty cute so far. I'm just going to borrow this for a second. So this is actually left over from the Rainbow One tutorial that I did a few weeks ago. I am going to give that to the bunny rabbit to hold. You don't want to wrap it in too tight or it might start to get lost in the mechanics. <laughs> so cute. And let's get to drawing on the face. Getting a nice and close and personal here to draw the face. Okay, let's draw the nose. little love heart shape remembering this is our inspiration here you might find it uh, beneficial to twist the head to the side for a moment just so that we can get in closer to the balloon and please excuse the condition of my nails they are horrible <laughs> to get the shape of the eyes We can start with a bit of an oval, but we want to give it more of a point on one side in towards the nose. Now my normal favourite black markers I've run out, so I've been using the Sharpie for the black coverage. And now we're just going to create the back of the eye. So we've got that really cute shape. So if you can, start off wider and bring it into a point. And then let's go ahead to add the lashes with the same idea in mind. I feel my black is a little bit dry and it's not really as beautiful as I'd like it to be. I've got a circle with a bit more of a flatter bottom. A nice soft rounded triangle to the side and then going from the top of the eye extending it out and around seeing if you can't keep it wider at the top and more narrower as you curve in and then our eyelashes couple of cute little eyebrows as well and let's not forget those whiskers I'm going to turn it upside down for a moment <laughs> before going the right way up again this beautiful lime green is a lovely springy addition and I'm going to use this to carefully color in just between the pupil and the side of the eye and again over here I think that's looking really cute. What can really set it off is adding white and Posca paint marker is my absolute favourite. The thing to remember with shine, it's the same on both sides when the light source is coming and shining in the same way. You're going to start at the front and sweep it around following the curve. So, given that 
it looks like this on this side we don't want to make it a mirror so it's time now the thing with the Posca you might need to have a couple of layers to get nice decent coverage um, so let's let that dry now we're going to add in a little bit more Then where you wherever you put it on one side try and pop it in the same place on the other and you can wait for that to dry before going in with that next layer and once you've got your shapes laid down feel free and confident to twist it and turn it to make these little amendments or adjustments you need and you can twist that back around to the front if you like it to the side hey who am I to judge <laughs> inflating your five inch round and popping it through before I put the candy cup on I'm just going to attach my bunny rabbit I've just done a little bit of poking and prodding until I think that's it's just right and then going to pop that back onto the candy cup and with these front paws I think they look sweet positioned either this way or this but whichever way you think looks super cute super works <laughs> and what about those balloon head bunny failures well don't they make a beautiful balloon one <laughs> or even you could just go ahead to make that a topper for a candy cup So that would look really sweet just sitting on top of a candy cup as well, I think. Especially once you give it a beautiful, cute little bunny rabbit face. I don't know about you, but I think that's super cute and I love it. Ah! And that is it for this video. Now, if you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Make sure to hit that like button. And if you want some more Easter inspired goodness, please go ahead to check out this video because I know you're going to love it and it makes a perfect headband for Easter. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy putting this positive twist in your life and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Two 160s and one. So to make this super cute bunny design, you are gonna need one. To make this super cute bunny rabbit, and so to make this super cute bunny rabbit, you're going to need one six inch heart, two, one. Okay, let's hop to it. <laughs> yes, that's entirely appropriate to say. Let's hop to how. So I've inflated it to about this size. So I've inflated it. I'm going to take one of those hearts. And I've just taken one of the 